Yeah, but there's always a lot of up and coming, and then they sort of just sort of fall by the wayside. Uh, but you are, and you've spent a lot of time with uh, Mr. Rump. Uh, you, you did the seven days swimming yep. through Iowa and Illinois with yep. him and his wife. Yep. Before we talk about Ann, because she has the probably the most second uh, important speech of this week tonight, uh, her job to humanize uh, her husband. Um, but let's talk about the candidates. What, what don't we know about Mitt Romney that you were able to learn spending such a, a large amount of time with him uh, during these fundraising but the eventually There's a lot of downtime where you get yep. a chance to meet and really get to know yeah. a person. What surprised you about Mitt Romney? Well, you know, I've read the same things in the media coverage. He was the stiff guy who doesn't He's a very fine person. I mean, he's a very down to earth guy. Um, anybody who's been the father of five days uh, knows how to kick back and get some fun. Get on the bus and go to the speed. And when we get on, he was just laid back and unbelievable as anyone else. So, I mean, he, I think sometimes he gets very criticized because I think when it's showtime, when it's time for him to go out and give a speech, he is very focused. He's a business guy. He's focused on delivering the message, focused on the issue of hands and the policies that he's talking about. And he takes that job very seriously. But when the, when the show's over, so to speak, and that's over, uh, he's just as normal and down to earth as the next one. You, you are uniquely qualified to talk about this particular issue. We, we sometimes want style over substance in our politicians. Yes. I happen to think you're a smart guy who knows how to use the one to beat the other. Uh, but if you go back to sort of Kennedy and Nixon, this all began. When we talked earlier, Abraham Lincoln were campaigning today, right? Some very high voice, you know, not a lot of personal charisma. The guy who never made it to a primary, uh, and he was one of the greatest presidents, if not the greatest president of the United States. Of and, and we, because of TV and because of what I do, the media, 15,000 members of which have descended on Tampa, have we watered down the system to where we're less concerned about policy and people's qualifications, uh, and we'd rather have somebody who's smoother or, or has more charisma or has that ability to make you feel like you're the most important person in the room? What does that have to do with government? Well, unfortunately, Ryan, right, not all members of the world are as intelligent. The fact of the matter is, it's tough to cover this. It's a lot easier to call cover personality. It's a lot easier to talk about the ways that talks or dresses or votes or acts. It needs to say, well, Paul Ryan's plan on Medicare is X, and Barack Obama's plan on Medicare is Y. These are the differences. So to get into the nitty gritty, it's a lot harder to cover that. And so the media generally likes to cover the scissor, love, likes to cover more of the, uh, the abstract things and really uh, the policy. You know, how many times you pick up the newspaper and they say, oh, which candidates are going to be issues, or which candidates are going to be more serious and lay out specifics? we got a presidential candidate and a vice presidential candidate who are more specific than any candidate has in decades. And, and yet the Washington Times and New York Times devoted valuable newspaper space to talking about how big Paul Ryan's clothes are. I, yeah, I, I mean, <laughs> Yeah. So, now you can, there's a, a place to have that conversation, I guess. And somebody obviously did because his clothes are getting smaller as he heads towards the convention. But but here's a serious guy, you know, who, who has done. And I, I think the question I have to you is, is a guy who's pragmatic. Uh, when you are Paul Ryan and a serious want to sort of fix a problem, you know you're putting yourself out on the line yep. to be criticized, right? Yep. They're going to show Grandma being pushed off the cliff because you literally feel like you have to fix Social Security or else it's going to go by the wayside. How much of what happens with political campaigns do you guys will get the job done in Washington? Because of worries about what's going to happen in your next place. Yeah, well, I think that's why many of us are so frustrated with Stop campaigning to get to work. 
All right, how much campaigning is going on right now at this convention for future field movies? You're here, you've got Rutherford's here, you've got Kurt Gillard in the mix. People are wondering about what's going to happen with this governor's race in, in Illinois. I know you're not going to give me a straight answer on whether or not you're running, but, but how much of it is, and I don't want to say jockeying, that sounds like a, a, a pejorative, but I mean, how much of it is, you know, people thinking down the road, you know, on the political chessboard, this move to the next move? Well, I think people prognosticate about it. Look, we have two months to go to 2012, and I think we all, all hands on economy on deck right now, focused on getting Mitt Romney, Paul Ryan, and in Illinois, our congressional delegation. We have been murdered in the district because we lost the Congress last time. And as a result, five of our races are in jeopardy. It's supposed to be in the best place for all kinds of money for the National Democratic Party. we got to make sure our congressional candidates get back across the finish line. Once the dust, dust settles after November 6th, we all will look around and decide what our people are doing. I saw people do. But I think anybody who goes around right now talking seriously about what they're doing is doing a disservice to our party and candidates who are I'm still trying to pass the image of Nancy Pelosi, guns blazing. All right, uh, the, the last question here. You've delivered a speech at a convention. Yeah. Walk us through just the humorous of it. Throw politics out the window. It doesn't matter who comes to Ann Romney's a novice. I mean, well, she's not a politician. Yeah. She's a stay-at-home mom yeah. and has given a ton to charity and, and, and you know, packed with breast cancer. And, and she's got a great personal story. She seems very likable. What's it like, the process of sitting in a room, you know, backstage somewhere in that big forum, waiting to go on the stage with all those lights and cameras? What's it like? Well, Ann is the first one. I'll tell you, someone who's giving credit for speeches to big audiences, there is nothing that would carry down from walking on that stage to have uh, I got to give my speech four years ago tonight for uh, John McCain, who's nominated, which means that Minneapolis is a target of the country. And, you know, I need to talk to a couple thousand people sure. convention, but you walk on your stage with 30,000 people. I mean, really can't explain. You walk out. And did you sort of sleepwalk through it? I mean, did you, did no. you get back and kind of go, what did I say? Or, or did that thinking, go? Focus. Yeah. Don't screw up. <laughs> Don't trip on the stage. Get to the podium. Is the television, you know, is everything working okay? I mean, it just, it, it, I will say, people say, I'm going to be nervous. That's probably one of the few times where I've actually walked out. And <laughs> yeah. You know, because it's just fun. But well, invigorating at the same time. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And once they start applauding and people get into what you're saying, you get into your it's room. more reassuring. And, and and the rise of the Hey, anybody that's raised five years can tell me. Okay. Any uh, last thing? Any you know hold out conservatives that are out there? You know, maybe you know still kind of have this bit's not conservative enough thing. And I think part of the problem yesterday when they got off the stage because of the cancellation, they gave some of these folks, folks on TV a chance to you know nature hates you know vacuum. Uh, what would you say to those? First, you're a pretty all, conservative yeah, guy. I'd say, first of all, um, Mitt Romney's pick with Paul Ryan shows that he doesn't just want to govern over the line. He actually wants to make a Great to be with you guys. All right, we're going to take a quick